everyone. Today I am here with Mr. Van G. Garrett, the author of Kicks. How are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing well. How's everybody else doing? How are you doing? How's everybody else doing today? Um, I'm doing good, and I'm just going to assume everyone else is doing good because uh, we're talking about this amazing picture book. Um, yeah. <laughs> so if you see uh, shoes just kind of appear on the screen, it's, it's just spinning the theme of it all. <laughs> Uh, so for those who haven't had a chance to read the picture book, although I know as soon as they're finished watching this interview, they're heading down to their local indie bookstore to pick it up. Um, but can you tell them about Kix? Yeah, so I appreciate that question. So Kix is about a, a young man, a boy, who's looking for the flyest pair of shoes. And, and he has to find the just perfect pair. And it's not just about getting the perfect pair of shoes, but how you feel, even when you open the box, just that that smell of a fresh pair of shoes, fresh pair of kicks, and just the joy that he has, a genuine, a, just a genuine joy for having some cool shoes. So, yeah. Yeah, the ode to shoes for sure. Um, so I want to take a moment to brag for a second. I actually got to meet you, uh, what, well, we're going on like a month now or a few weeks ago. We met yeah. at uh, the American Booksellers Association Children's Institute, and you and I both attended the Harper Collins dinner, um, which that dinner, just so people know, it was... It was like tables of six, and then the authors would rotate. What was it, like every 20, 25 minutes, I yeah, think? Uh, yeah, and so I got to be at a table that you got to rotate to, so we got to have dinner together. I can wrap it out. <laughs> and uh, no surprise at all here, we did talk about kicks and shoes, and um, it was such a great dinner. And then a couple days later, we were still at the conference, and I got a personalized signed copy of Kick. So I just want to thank you so much for my copy and for having mm -hmm. dinner with me because it was a delightful dinner. <laughs> it really was. No, I appreciate that. It was, yeah, that was a great, that was a great experience. I had a blast. And uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm glad you had a good time. And I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying the book as well. That's cool. I, I did. I love this book. It's so good. Um, and now for a chance for you to brag, because I am not the only person to love this book, I'm actually going to... Uh, read a praise on the front cover and it says a brilliant a brilliantly written and illustrated ode to sneakers and sneakerheads young and old a gift to us all and uh that is from angie thomas i don't know if we can see it in there yeah that is from angie thomas you got praised by angie thomas yes yeah, it's, it's, it's a big deal it's a it's a big deal when my editor was like you know i'm thinking that we're gonna go with the blurb on the on the front I was like, okay, you know, and she's like, oh, and Angie loved this book and blah, blah. I was like, wow, that's like really awesome. So it means so much. First of all, it means so much that, that somebody would take the time to voice how they feel about the book, yeah. but especially for your debut, like for my debut picture book for, you know, for somebody of that caliber to say something that means a lot, truly. Yeah, that was so cool. So that was actually one of my questions is, um, so you do find out like the blurbs and the praise before it gets released then and what's going on the cover? Yeah, yeah. So, so it's like uh, we we got some blurbs, and we just wanted you to be aware of what people were saying. Some advanced praise uh, yeah. because we think this is important, and you probably would appreciate this. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> you know that's that's really cool. <laughs> and, then, and then to see them tweeting about it and 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 talking about it in the social media, it was just really you know. Um, and you saw this at the conference, you know, you, you know, at the conference earlier, just the supportive community, just the, 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 the young adult, uh, middle grade picture book community. I mean, from booksellers yeah. to the authors, the illustrators, it's just a, a great community to be a part of. So, yeah, very fortunate, very blessed to be a part of this organization, this group of cadre of writers, illustrators, yeah. artists. Yeah. I, I agree. It was a very, very amazing sense of community. Um, it was incredible because was it? It was my first time attending, and I think it was yours too, right? <laughs> yeah. So you you kind of go in knowing, okay, I'm gonna be surrounded by like other booksellers, uh, like and authors and stuff, and and then you get there, and then you just like feel the pride like coming from everyone, and couldn't wait to read that book that they saw, and you know, and it, it was just awesome, and I loved it so much, and um, I don't know if we're allowed to talk about this or not, but you shared something with me at that dinner. Are we allowed to talk about this? Uh, yeah, you know, yeah I, can, I can tell you about it. I won't be able to give a title for one, but I can okay. give you a title for one. So in a few weeks, there will be another picture book that will be announced, and, and it, it's not part of this series. It's, it's in a different vein. And, and uh, the narrative is a different narrative, and you get a chance to see a different voice completely. It's not a, it's not an 
it's not an ode, so to speak. Okay. It's, po it's poetic, it's lyrical, but it's not in the same vein as Kicks. Uh, so there's this book that will be announced in a few weeks. And then, uh, so that comes out summer 2023. Okay. The following year, the follow-up to Kicks is Specs. Yes. And, so <laughs> and then another book, a mystery book, and then we have Specs. And then the possibility of two more books that are also a part of this series. So it's okay. Kicks, Specs, all about glasses. Yeah. I can't talk to you about. And then yet another one I can't talk to you about. So uh, yeah, so I'm just having fun. I'm, I'm just having fun. And, and and Specs is, if you like Kicks, you're going to, I think you're really going to just love Specs because it takes it to the next level. And oh, Reggie Brown. Yeah, I was just going to, yeah. Copy. I'm going to hold up my copy as well. Reggie, is Brown, uh, Reggie Brown did a, an awesome job. Uh, in kicks, and he's also gonna be the illustrator for Specs. Okay, so, I was gonna ask that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm excited for Specs, and actually, one of our booksellers, um, they they change their their glasses depending on what outfit they're wearing. So oh, wow. <laughs> I know they'll be very excited for Specs. That'll be so cool. So is there is there like a series name then? Uh, so we're playing with the name a little bit. We're playing we're playing with the with the name a little bit, and I can't give you that information right now okay. because no it would be. That that piece of information will let you know what the other titles are because it's a hodgepodge of, of names. So uh, yeah, so okay. until the ink dries, no worries. Um, but speaking of Reggie, let's just brag about Reggie for a second because the art yes. of Kicks is absolutely incredible. Right, um, right. It takes you on that ride of when you're a kid and how you imagine yourself looking and feeling just you know, by wearing a certain pair of shoes or maybe a backpack or whatever it is. But he, Reggie captures the art so well of how you feel as a kid. And like, it's just so, my favorite quote is the kicks help you shine like the brightness of sun rays and new money, even when you have a shoestring tight allowance. And the picture is being on the red carpet and getting your photo taken by paparazzi. And that is just so true as a kid. You're like, Oh, this is gonna turn my life around. <laughs> this is I'm gonna be a star now. <laughs> exactly. Yes, yes. You, and that's you know I, I, that's one thing that I really really uh, appreciate about Reggie's work because to take this ode right to take a poem yeah. and create art around the poem that in itself is like it's very very special. But he he's able to bring out those emotions, and he's able to bring out the just the the, the joy, the sheer sense of joy, right? And so many people have said this. Uh, hey, Van, like it, like when we see the the cover, the cover is just it's just full of energy, and it just is a bright cover, and it makes you feel good. And so I appreciate that. It's an honor. Like I'm just so honored to work with Reggie, and mm -hmm. and now it's Reggie uh, Reggie Brown. New York Times best selling illustrator, right? Yes, yeah, that's he's true. Doing his, he's doing his thing. Yeah. I love yeah. it. But you you're an artist yourself, right? You do yeah, yeah. your art's amazing. <laughs> no, I look, I, I appreciate that. You're being kind, but oh. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh yeah, I'm a visual artist. I, I do a lot of self-portraits and and uh, I paint, so I do oils, acrylics, graffiti. But photography is something that I've really studied. And so travel photography is something that is just, it just really speaks to me. So, I'm, yeah. So I'm also a visual artist as well. Uh, so yeah. so that, that, became a, that became a really tricky dynamic when they were showing me <laughs> portfolios for, for, for kicks because they're like, what do you think about this artist? And I, I'm trying to turn that brain off as a visual artist. But when they showed me, and, I, and, and to be clear, I saw a lot of great portfolios. Oh, of course. Of artists and people that I would love to work with even to this day. But when I saw Reggie's work, I was like, the energy is right. It's just the right energy. So it's the best fit all the way around. Well, yeah. it's it's funny that you say you do graffiti art because I felt like a lot of the pictures in here, it kind of gave me that graffiti airbrush kind of vibe yeah. on some of it, especially the hair. Look at it. The hair in this book is absolutely amazing right. um there's yeah like the kids lining up you get to see all the different hairstyles but it it has that like airbrush graffiti style so maybe that's also probably what drew you to reggie is like i relate to that style. yeah hey look and the fact that you pull that out that you pull that out so are you a visual artist because you have like a, a detailed eye for that like you saw you saw that 
A little bit. Yeah, it runs in my family. Um, mainly my brother's the artist, but um, I just, I love art so much. Yeah. I just, I can always go to an art museum and never get bored and I can see art on a building and absolutely love it. And uh, yeah, so when I saw your art, checking out your website, I was just blown away by it. Uh -huh. And I was hoping that in the future there would be a picture book or even a coffee table book because I would snatch that up in a heartbeat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. Yeah, I love, I love doing that. And for me, um, art is it's somewhat seasonal, if I'll say that, um, because I, I write year round. But in the winter months, that's when I really enjoy doing uh, some of the paintings, and, and because it's cool and and my brain is working a little differently at that time, I guess. Um, and then for the photography, I can do photography year round, but when I'm traveling, when I'm on the road, when I'm experiencing new places, actually, when we were in Arizona, yeah. that was that was another way of me processing. Like, I would find, like, because we were at a nice place. Just oh, my God. Place. So <laughs> nice. Like, you know, it was nice. So I, I would walk around. I would just take photos of different things and trying to find the nuances and just assembling that work. And then I might say, okay, I'm going to do something with some of the, the images, but you really using the images as source material. Like, the, uh, it's ecrastic writing, like call and response. Like, I'll look at a photo and then I'll write to the photo and find inspiration. So, yeah. It, it's all it's all connected you know <laughs> have you ever um there's there's this picture book i love um it's called the the ghost oh wait, ghost in the house ghost in the house by oliver jeffers no I, have I you seen that one so it's really cool and i could see you almost doing something like this with having the two different art mediums is the book it's like photographs of this old kind of looking haunted looking house yeah. but then the main character and the ghost they're like illustrations so it's a really cool medium of like the photograph with art. And I was like, oh, I could definitely see you doing that because you'd have your photographs, but then just paint on them a little bit and just add like characters and stuff. Oh, no, I, I like that idea. I'm, I'm going to check that out. I'm inspiring you for your picture book of 2025. <laughs> hey, you know what? I appreciate that. I'll, I will shout you out in the book. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I want. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, right on. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So what was it like? Because you you do mainly poetry books. So right, what was right. it like stepping into the picture book world? You know, I've written poetry professionally for 20 plus years. And poetry for me is it's just, it, it's second nature. Like I, I just, that's a big part of who I am. And a lot of people know me as a poet. And going from writing poetry to writing for kids is not really that big of a stretch for me. Uh, my, my brain literally thinks in, in rhyme and in rhythm all the time, but I didn't want to do the cliche song, you know, like, you know, sing-songy type of rhyme. Like, I wanted, I wanted kicks in the rest of the books in the series to really have something structurally taking place. But at the same time, I wanted the narrative to be important. And so you said, well, how can it be an ode but also have a narrative? Well, it does tell a story, yeah. uh, but, it's, but, but, but it's, it's more object-driven. And so even with that, um, if you were to, to, to take away the beautiful illustrations that Reggie did and you, were, and you would see what I'm doing on the page, there, I mean, there are things uh, like slant, I mean, obviously slant rhymes and, and, and hard rhymes and alliteration and all these motifs and sensory details. So I'm doing all those poetic things. So um, it, like I said, it wasn't a stretch for me, but I think making sure that the language was kid friendly was I think the biggest part, like making sure I did not sacrifice the, uh, the story for the sake of the rhyme, because there were times I wanted to use like this really cool word, and my and my agent and then my illustrator, my I'm sorry, my agent as well as my editor would be like, "Yeah, um, I don't think that's the right word." <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, okay, I got it, I got it." So I'm just trying my chops out, you know, um, in writing for for young people. I've written for young people as far as anthologies and and different collections and that, but but. To have a, a book out in the world and now having several books that are going to be out in the world, it's, it's just the coolest thing ever. You know, it's like, it's so cool. I'm, I'm just really excited. And then you, you'll you do a reading at a school somewhere and and, and it, you can see the expressions and, on kids' faces. It's, I'm having a blast. I really am. Yeah, That's yeah. so good. Yeah, it's a great one. We've read it a few times at Storytime and it's just, it's so fun. And 
it is cool with the, it does have that poetry vibe to it, which I absolutely love that. Um, I would never want to do this because I love Reggie's art in it, but you could easily take away the art and it just be one long poem as an ode to sneakers and it still works. Right. Yes, the art brings it up a level, making it an excellent picture book. Oh, oh yeah. I'll... <laughs> but you can take it away and see just the simple, or not simple, the, um, just the poetry of it and right. how it all flows together and the rhythm of it is absolutely amazing. And I love the different style of rhymes in it. I think yeah. that it just made it more powerful that it didn't feel like it was forced because there are some picture books out there. I won't call anyone out by name, but where it does feel like I'm being forced to read rhymes and I'm like, you just put words together and it's just, it's not flowing. Whereas this, like, there is that nice rhythm to it. Yeah, I, you know, I appreciate that. I, I'm going to tell you, here's, so this is when I, this is when I, I, I do the, the craft or the, the workshopping with you. Just the first stanza. The first stanza is, you can't pick kicks the way you pick sticks or stones right. or dinosaur bones. Right? <laughs> Watch this. That first stanza has, it, there, there are at least three things happening. Watch this. You can't pick kicks the way you pick sticks or stones or dinosaur bones. That first stanza is an homage to Naomi Shihab Nye, the poem Valentine for Ernest Mann. Because in the poem Valentine for Ernest Mann by Naomi Shihab Nye, Palestinian poet, lives in San Antonio, Texas, big time writer, great poet. She has this line in her first stanza. She says, you can't order a poem the way you order a taco. <laughs> walk up to the counter, say I always want to, and blah blah yeah. blah. So and so you can't order a poem the way you order a taco. You can't pick kicks the way you pick sticks. So it's that rhythm. Yeah. Next thing, it is an homage to Gary Soto. When Gary Soto was a kid, Gary Soto, another one of my favorite writers, he said, Gary, what do you want to be when you grow up? Gary says, uh, he said, I want to be a paleontologist, I want to be a priest, and I want to be a hobo. <laughs> <laughs> so when I, so when I, when I thought about like what 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 am I gonna write about? I yeah. thought about when I was a kid and in the backyard I always wanted to find dinosaur bones. I always wanted to do that. And I thought about Gary, you know Gary Soto when he was like, I want to be a paleontologist, but I didn't know how to write a book uh, about a kid just digging around trying to find dinosaur bones. Right. So I was thinking about Gary. I was thinking about me as a kid. And then the third part of of, of, of this three prong <laughs> illustration. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, yeah. so in poetry, right? In poetry, every word has to count. Every word matters. I would, I'm sorry. I, I I love this stuff so much. No, I, please I, I, keep going. Series. I love it. I, I love a poetry lecture series here, right? I but, love it. But in poetry, right? Every word matters. Every word has to count. And so the poems that, that people know me, for writing, uh, I'm known for writing the Kwan Saba. And a Kwan Saba is a 49 word poem. It's a 49 word poem. You have seven, uh, you have seven lines, seven words in each line, and then no word can have more than seven letters, proper nouns excluded. So it's a 49 word poem. So for me, writing in a very uh, compressed space, that's second nature. I, it's like that's, you know, but writing a picture book that's 250 words, because that's using my word count, 250, 250 words, it's like, it's still like, it's it's just a joy for me to tell a story in less than 300 words, but I'm very cognizant that every word should have a purpose, should have not just a meaning, but multiple meanings, and it should do the work. But at the same time, like you said, not to overwrite, you know, so it's a, it's just, it's a blast, you know, it's like, it's formulaic, you know, it's formulaic. Yeah. No, I love it. I, and it, it you capture that in the book for sure. Um, so if you love poetry, definitely also check out this picture book because it's fantastic. And I love how the, uh, the world is shifting into more poetry and verse with novels coming out in verse. And I think that is so fascinating because it's such a unique way to tell a story, but it's also been a way that stories have been told since the dawn of time. <laughs> and so it's cool to see this like shift of, you know, started out in like verse and poetry and all this stuff and, you know, took a break to more extensive novels and now we're, we're going back to it and I absolutely love it. So I'm 
begging you in this moment to please do one yourself because Kix is fantastic. <laughs> so please come out of the novel and burn. <laughs> you know, look, I appreciate you saying that on so many different levels. And I'm just gonna ask you a question. Um, I'll give you something to think about. Who's to say that that's not already in the works? Ooh, and okay. I'm, just, okay. I'm putting that out there. I'm just, I'm just putting it out there. I'm just saying that what you're asking might very well be left up to some publishers to say we're going to roll with this, right? But, but no. But what you said is, I mean, it's exact. You're like spot on because that's part of the oral tradition. You know that, right? Yeah. Because People weren't on their, they weren't on their iPhones. They weren't like gaming on, on like these ships as they were traversing the seas. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> or or oh, were they? We just don't know. They all got lost at sea. <laughs> the iPhone one, right? Yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or whatever the number, whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, 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 this is just, a, this is just a part of the oral tradition, right? Mm -hmm. So when you start thinking about epic poems, come on, like, think about it for like 30, 40, 50, sometimes 100 pages plus, there are these, there are, are these poems that are narratives, right? Poems, and so they're, no, they're narratives that are driven by poems, and the I am's are being followed in this meter, and everything has a, I mean, it's, it's, yeah, so, you're, you're exactly right. It's, it's just a secular effect, right? It is. And I, and I love it. I eat it up. I'm so please all the publishers in the world, <laughs> listen to me and make this happen. <laughs> yeah. Give and get a novel in verse. Right, I right. Yeah. Oh, look, I, look, I, first of all, look, just parenthetically, I'm having a blast, right? Cause, cause I, look, I love talking about this. I, I love talking about this. This is, this is, what I do, I eat, breathe this stuff every day, all day, every day. And the, you know, that's where we're having this conversation. It's just, it's, it's super exciting because you get it. And I know, I know that your, I know that your readers get it as well. Oh, I know yeah. that your viewers get this, if, you know, they get this stuff. It, but it's, uh, and, and yeah, I, I, I really like how, uh, like even, uh, have you read uh, uh, Hidden by Helen Frost? Hidden about the, uh, about, oh, you have to check it out. That's okay. about first, uh, that is, it, it just, it just really, it just really has some unexpected twists. And then, I mean, of course, we know, I mean, we know some of, like some of the greats that are doing it in modern day times as well, but there's so many novels of verse, uh, K.A. Holtz, Kwame Alexander. I mean, you know, there's so many people that are yeah. doing it at, at super high levels. And I think one, it grabs the attention, as we know, it grabs the attention of the reluctant readers, but right. it also is a, it's a bridge for the, 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 the people who might not really appreciate poetry so much. So it's like a gateway into poetry, so to speak, you know, yeah. a local way to, to see what is, what is this all about, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's also helpful. Um, my, my husband's dyslexic and it's also helpful because um, when he reads a novel, he has a hard time reading a novel because okay. it'll take him, you know, five minutes to a page where for some of us, it might take a minute or 30 seconds or whatnot, but with having it in verse, it's smaller. And so he's able to like focus more on the, yes. the words and stuff. And it's not having to piece together one sentence. It's piecing together, like possibly four words right. and it makes it easier. So it's helpful, not just for him, but also, like you said, kids who are learning to like read and getting into novels, knowing that they don't have to read something that's so extensive with tiny, tiny fun. And um, yeah. it's been actually a lot of fun at the bookstore, you know, giving kids those books and being like, check, check this one out. I know it may seem like poetry and I know you may not want to read poetry, but it's not that exactly. <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, that, that and thank you for, look thank you for sharing that personal experience because you're right and when you said that i i was thinking of, of the the presentation the, the visual layouts of some of those um if i can use the word airy some of those 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 airy yeah. poems those where, where um the use of m space and 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 uh word wrapping and those different like uh very visual elements take place but it allow it also allows readers to be able to annotate in the white space one of my favorite she is like 
by far one of my favorite writers. I mean, my favorite book is The House on Mango Street, right? Oh, and, good one, yeah. But, but you, yeah, you look at at, at Santa Cisneros, we're getting, well, here's a tie back. We're, we're in school right now. Here's I know. Back, right? <laughs> so, so, so you talked about photography. And so you do understand that that word vignette, which also functions as, as not just a literary term, but also as the artistic term, an art term. Um, yeah. so, so Sandra has these vignettes, these snapshots, but she's also cognizant, here it goes, when we're talking about photography, she's cognizant of the, the positive space and the negative space. Right. We talked about the Kwan Saba, the 49 word poem. You can tell a story in 49 words. Oh, yeah. some, some people would like to tell a story in 49 pages, but but as an artist, you're able to use whatever vehicle you need to use to get your message across, right? Mm -hmm. So when Sandra writes those vignettes, it's like she she provides all this white space, either at the, the beginning of the vignette or beneath the vignette, and it gives you enough space to, to take those notes, to annotate, to really process. And, and I think that's also winning for readers because it's like, you, it's an experience, right? You want to be able to sit with it. You want to be able to, but it's it, it's also an artistic expression, the way that it's presented on the page. So when readers read it, they're like, oh, you know, so I think that's part of the fun. It's like, yeah. you, you know, it's it's as much, you know, words as it is art, you know? So it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing, you know? It's, a whole it's, thing. it's funny that you say that because now thinking back and recalling in English class, I felt like whenever we finished reading a novel, obviously, you know, have the discussion, but it seemed like there could only be one meaning, one metaphor, right. or maybe two, but you, it felt like with novels, at least maybe it was my school, I don't know, it felt like you couldn't really branch out. But when it came to poetry, oh, it could have a thousand meanings. And I'm like, how? what's the difference? Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it should be up to the um, uh, reader's perception because um and I'm maybe you agree with this too but I feel like every author I've talked to they say that once the book is published it's no longer theirs right right no it's, it's not you know it's not and, and and so you use the English teacher example it's yeah. interesting because there are some English teachers who might be of of the, the the mindset of from the old guard or the old way of thinking that might say you know what this is because this is not standardized uh, you know, grammar or standardized English, or it's not written in the in, in the in the proper conventions, and it doesn't adhere to X, Y, and Z because yeah. it's all over the place. It's fragmented, and 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 just like in poetry, you have lines that are enjammed and, and truncated, and all these things that this is structurally because structurally it's not sound, right? That yeah. it, it has no merit, right? And, and so there be, there be people to dismiss the genre, but at the same time, you can't. You can't just turn a blind eye to the the power of of literature, you know. And, and so you're right. I mean, it does make the the work more accessible. And and uh, because if if you say that, if you're limiting uh, novels in verse, then well, what about what about the graphic novels that have uh, have uh, are now the adaptations of those works like Macbeth, like uh, Shirley Jackson's The Lottery, like you yeah. know uh, Edgar Allan Poe. Even the other day, I saw. Um, Diary of Anne Frank. Have you seen, have you seen the, the Diary of Anne Frank graphic novel? I like, haven't. Oh, I know oh. of it. I haven't seen it yet. But we have Anne of Green Gables as a graphic novel. Like it's, <laughs> which um, it's cool because actually a lot of teachers now are coming in and buying those for their students, and it's because kind of going back for a second. It also with like dyslexic, and then also understanding both sides of the brain. It's helping them, which right. I think is just so cool and so fascinating that it's like we're finally getting to that point where it's like, there are so many different types of like people, how they learn, you know, right. we don't all just learn in one way. So why not have those options of a graphic novel, of a novel in verse, of the original classic, because there will be kids who still, you know, get out of a gift from it and stuff. But it's like, have those different interpretations because that's how you're going to reach more kids and reach everyone in the class by honoring them and saying like, hey, I've got something for you and this will help you. And I think that is just, oh, I love it so much. It makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah, oh, of course. Of, of course. Yeah. I mean, years ago, I think um, it was it was so revolutionary. And I'm talking when I say years ago, I, I mean probably like decades ago. I think it was yeah. like Oliver's Travel. Uh, I don't know if you like there were some comic books. Like there were some comic books that uh like I mean, obviously they were like the precursors to graphic novels, right? Blah, blah, blah. But it was like just like a like a, like a small like a, a small amount, and 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 it was like 
Uh, you, you have to also understand which this this dynamic has changed over time. For some students, it was uncool to be caught carrying a book, right? No, oh, I hated that. Comic, <laughs> carrying a comic book or a graphic novel was like I'm low key cool, right? I'm yeah. just reading, reading. Oh, it's just this comic book, right? Yeah. But now reading is taking on a it's taking on a whole new life. I'm like it's 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 cool to read again. Always, I think yes. it's, it's so awesome, right? It's it's cool to read, and it's almost like if you're not reading, then why are you not reading? Like yeah. you can find them on so many. The other thing, I mean, come on. I know you have other things to ask me, but, but, I'm, <laughs> but I'm just even thinking about, like, even with your cell phone, right? Because now people read on electronic devices, so yeah. people are reading or you're just checking your social media. So it's it's like now people are finding different ways to, to tap in. And, and No, I, I agree. It's so funny that you say that because, yeah, when I was in high school and I loved reading, I still love reading, obviously, but I was considered a book nerd and I'm like, whatever, I don't care. I'll, I'm going to keep reading. And yeah. now it's so awesome seeing all the kids that come into the bookstore because we are primarily a children's bookstore right. and how many of them are just like telling their friends what books they're reading and like, oh, my friend recommended this. Oh, I'm giving this one to my friend. Oh, this. It's like, what? It's cool to read now. <laughs> I'd be one of the popular kids now. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, yeah. we, we have a middle grade book club and it's really cool. They get to read books that aren't out yet. They're getting the advanced reader copies and seeing their faces light up when we tell them about the book club. Like, oh yeah, you get to read books that don't come out until like uh, for, for a few months and you get to write reviews and they're like, oh, what? Uh, I can do yeah. this? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Take some books. <laughs> it's so uh, exciting to see that. I love it. That, no, that's, that, that is, that is super cool. So shout out to y'all for even, I mean, just putting that into play because that is, that, that, that's building, uh, it, it's, no, it's, it's nurturing and it's cultivating, uh, just not just the love for, for reading, but also being able to review is it's so it's it's reading and writing you know right or concert and, and that is that's dynamic so yeah, yeah well and we start them young with story time daily including kicks <laughs> i'll bring it back around wait, to kicks <laughs> wait, you mean, wait you mean wait you mean kicks kicks this book this book you read it oh, 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 have you read book? it <laughs> i heard of, i heard of that book. yeah i heard of that book yeah, i heard yeah. it's pretty good i mean angie thomas wrote a review about it but whatever no big deal <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, no, no big deal. <laughs> oh my god i remember when i first saw that i was like angie wait angie <laughs> it's like that's crazy <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 that's what i said i was like yeah this is that's crazy too that's crazy oh my god yeah just i mean I'm having a, you know, I'm just having a blast. I'm having a blast with it because, um, because obviously, like, I mean, you know, this, I, this is what I thoroughly enjoy. Before, before the pandemic, I was at a bookstore or a library every day of the week. Right. Like literally, like every day of the week, I was either at a bookstore or a library, and um, and just looking at the looking at the new books and and previewing and and that. And now to go to a bookstore and like to see, you know, see kicks there and, and 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 knowing that people have access to the information whether they purchase it or whether they check it out from the library or whether they they just take the time to like look at the pages all of that all of that is cool right because yeah. i mean it's an experience and that's you know who can ask for more than that it's an experience but you know the reality of it is we all have something to say you know that everybody has something to say so maybe that'll inspire somebody to write their own story. And the cool thing about it is if somebody can write, literally write about shoes, you can write about anything. I know. And it's, well, yeah. you have to be good at it though, because this is a, this is a real good book about shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, that, yeah that's an interesting story, how that, how that came about. Did I, did I tell you that story? I didn't mm -hmm. I know I'd tell you that story. I don't think but, so. All right. So you have time for me to tell you just like the, how this, how tell it. Came? Tell All the right. story. All right. oh, oh, yeah. So you know, you know, I'm on the road right now. I'm yeah. On the right now. Yeah. But, if anyone uh, couldn't tell, he, Van is currently in a hotel room. <laughs> I'm, I'm on the road right now. You have a hotel room. And uh, so, so years ago, I was at a writers' retreat, and some of my friends that are really established writers were there. Kwame Alexander being one of them. Oh. And, and I know I say his name and people fall <laughs> off. So I'm like, dude, I say your name and people fall off. Oh, yeah. but, <laughs> so, uh, so I was I was there at this retreat and I, I wanted to relax. I was like, I just, I just want to just chill. And he said, why are you not writing? I said, man, I've been writing all year. 
I want to relax. He said, dude, you're at a writer's retreat. You need to be writing. I said, all right, all right, man. So I said, okay, tell me what I should write about. And then give me a timeline. Give me, give me a timeline. Like, is it like, you know, over the next couple of days, blah, blah, blah. He said, write about what you feel passionate about. That's the first, because he, come on, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Write about what you feel passionate about. Next thing he said is he said, write about the things that you think people might overlook and not really appreciate. And the third thing he said is, hey, you know what? You have an hour to come up with the first draft. I was like, all right, bet. Because I like a challenge. That's all yeah. right. So I go upstairs uh, to my room because we're this we're in this big river house and blah blah blah. And I go upstairs to my room. I put my music on, and it's it's the uh, it's Nina Simone's for women, but it's a jazz arrangement of that. So it's Ooh. a it's a it's a yeah. I gotta find it. I'm gonna have to let you know what the, who the artist is and that. Please but do. It, <laughs> it's just walking baseline. Doom 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 doom. Uh. So like so, I'm just listening to the baseline. I set my timer and I get after it. Kicks was written in 55 minutes. They wrote it in 55 minutes. Oh came my God. Down. Yeah, I came down. I shared it with the people that were, you know, in the group. And they're like, yo, that's, oh, that's good. Like, you know, <laughs> come, on, you, your friend, come on, your friends are, I mean, you know, friends are going to pump your, your head up, right? They're going right. to, and I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. And I was like, I appreciate it. Y'all have been kind, but they wouldn't let up. They would like, they would not take their foot off the gas they kept saying this is like really good so even when we went to dinner and the following day and they said you know you need to send this out and so it went from it went from like just you know stepping up to the challenge to auditioning agents that and i'm so glad i have like i had my agent is like the real deal shout out to emily mitchell warnick and pratt she's the real deal <laughs> they went to finding the right agent and uh and then from there it was like who's going to you know, get, and it came down. It came down to two publishers, and I'm really glad that you know, Versify Harper Collins said that we want to we we want to stand behind you. So it's it's been good. It's been a good time. Yeah, and it's I mean, who doesn't know the name Harper Collins? So that. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's been a good a good time. It's been a good time for sure. Oh, that's so awesome. So, quick question: Are you the child in this book? Is this based on? Your life a little bit <laughs> as you know, a kid. <laughs> I, you know, I, I wish I could say that was my life as a kid, but the truth of the matter is, no. It wasn't based on my life as a kid. When I was a kid, I, I liked I liked shoes, but it wasn't for the same reason I like shoes right now. When when I was in school, I remember I uh, I had a pair of blue and yellow roos. I don't know if you know, with a kangaroo on the side, and it's like, oh, super old school, like the little Velcro thing. I'm like, I'm a young. And, uh, but everybody liked those shoes. And I don't know why. I just thought they were, I mean, I didn't care anything about it. But yeah. I remember people making a big deal about it. And then when I was in uh, middle school and high school, I wanted like the, 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 the Jordans that came out that everybody wanted. And my folks were like, nah, that's not, <laughs> not going to happen. <laughs> and they were like, but we can't go to Mervyn's. We can go to Mervyn's now. And you can get those Converse over there. And uh, you know what? You can get as many <laughs> different pairs of Converse as you like. We can switch it up because they were like inexpensive, blah, blah, blah. And I remember I wore some banana, banana yellow Converse to school. All my friends, everybody else was wearing Jordans. I'm yeah. wearing some yellow Converse to school. <laughs> and at first I'm just like, Oh man, they're gonna laugh and blah blah blah. But this is what I chose to wear, and my friends were like, "Wow, those are so cool!" And I was like, "Yeah, I like them too." And in my Converse, <laughs> like, and so I started wearing like different pairs of Converse, and and so it wasn't until I became an adult that I was able to get some of the shoes that I like. And to be clear, I can't always tell you the Jordan One, the Jordan Four, the Jordan Three, the Jordan Nine, because I'm not. I might wear like. I'm, in my collection, I might have two or three Jordans. Right. But, like, but I like very artistic shoes. So like, I have a lot of Reebok, Basquiat, uh, and, and just different shoes that speak to me. Um, but yeah, but Joshua is my, this, he's a, that's the name of my nephew. And so this character looks a lot like Joshua. Okay. Uh, so it's a shout out, it's a shout out to Josh. But, um, but yeah, I am a sneakerhead though. And uh are you wait? Are you a sneakerhead? Do you like you like shoes like that? I, I, I do like shoes. I, I don't know if I'd call myself a sneakerhead, unfortunately, um, but I will say your book has inspired me. <laughs> uh, I'm glad somebody's inspired by it. Yeah, that's um, cool. So I have been looking at more shoes lately, which I am sh not shocked at, I guess, but just kind of 
surprised at because before I I have shoes obviously but I've never been that into it I remember as a kid though I had to have jellies because that was what yeah. everyone had yeah, yeah. all the girls had jellies back in the all day. the girls had jellies um, <laughs> but yeah other than that there's never been um I actually will I'll color on shoes sometimes nice so I'll do that sometimes and I'm actually working on like a Star Wars pair for my husband <laughs> right now um <laughs> but yeah and but I've like colored a Marvel pair and yeah <laughs> so I'll, I'll color shoes <laughs> So, so do you have some heat somewhere? I want to, I want to see those. Of course, you can't say. I knew yeah, you were gonna say that. Color. Okay, give me one second. Give me one. Yeah. Show, talk about shoes while I step away for a second. All right, cool. All right, so yeah, so it's a takeover. This is the Van Garrett takeover. <laughs> while she's going and finding those pairs of shoes, but um, yeah, again, it's a blast. Maybe you're hanging out with y'all talking about kicks. Yesterday, when she comes back, because I want to show her the picture. Yesterday, I saw some super, super rare shoes, the Jordan 1984 shoes, the original Michael Jordan shoes that go for a crazy amount of money, several thousands of dollars. And so I'm going to show y'all that picture. Got a chance to hold those yesterday. And uh, yeah. And so while I'm on the road, I'm always looking for cool shoes. I'm always going to the cool shoe stores. I'm trying them on. I'm talking to people about shoes. Collecting shoes for me came a little later in life. Uh, but now I know what I like. And because I don't have a whole lot of money, I have to be very cognizant of, of how I spend my money. So uh, all, my, all my money does not go to shoes, no. But uh, every now and then I'll treat myself to get a nice pair of shoes. And that's like my souvenir when I'm on the road. I like to get a, a brand new pair of shoes. Uh, when she comes back again, I will show all of you the shoes that I am uh, wearing while I'm on the road, while I'm on vacation. And uh, maybe we can do that. So yeah. All right, and perfect timing. <laughs> oh, okay. Talking to the audience about shoes and whatnot. So, okay. Yeah, let's see if you have. Oh, see. God. Okay. I did these when Avengers Endgame came out, so they're a few years old. Um, but it's a... Uh... <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> so I got my Whoa. love of Wasp and Captain Marvel and Captain America, and it's kind of hard to tell, but it's like the Doctor Strange yeah. little orange circles, and then I put some, like... <laughs> quotes on the side oh, yes, yes, and then yes. because of the uh the uh good old cap and falcon <laughs> i have uh, on my left shoe i put it's, i don't know if you could see it it says on your left right there oh yeah in honor <laughs> of cap and falcon so <laughs> really, yes. really, really those really are good. those are my uh marvel avengers assembled shoes <laughs> nice 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 why are you put them down hold them back up I want oh, to, okay I want sorry to, i want to sit with the money to sit with the art yeah okay Oh go. yeah, oh that's yeah, that's legit. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. Hey, right around the islets, like okay, like right there on the on the black, right there. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, missed that important detail. Like, so you're the character. Yeah. Right? So these are these are my favorite female characters nice. from nice. it. It's a little hard to tell who they are, but I, at least I know who they <laughs> are. Um, and then uh, some of my favorite male characters. So. Oh. Right on, right on. That's Groot. I see. Is that the boy Groot? That is the boy Groot. And I got, let's see, who do I have on here? I have Loki, Thor, um, and then uh, Winter Soldier, Vision, and Groot. And then I have Scarlet Witch, um, uh, Black Widow, mm. Agent Carter, because I love me, Agent Carter, yeah, yeah. Uh, Okoye, and Gamora, and who else? Oh, I don't, oh, and then Maria Hill. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah that's, yeah, that's super. That's super awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what does the tongue look like? What, what is it? What oh, is it? The, yeah. the tongues are just they're just solid colors. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, but I didn't, I took off the shoelaces because I wanted to be able to see the the quotes and characters and stuff. So that's the way to rock them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the way to rock them. Good, yeah. Job. When I finish, uh, when I finish the Star Wars ones, I'll send you a picture of them. <laughs> I, can't wait. I, I can't wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. That's so exciting, you know? Some customs, you know what I mean? Uh, some like, custom shoes. Some custom shoes. I don't know. Maybe if someone sends me their shoe size, I'll make them kicks. Maybe I'll make them a pair of kicks. <laughs> oh, don't even play, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to put some in the mail. It'll be, my, it'll be my way of getting you to Denver for a story time and then, like, a poetry discussion in the evening. <laughs> oh, hey, look, I, you know, I'm trying to get to Denver for real. I mean, yeah. I've heard nothing but great things, and I, and I just really want to get up there. How's the weather? Is it is it cold right now is it hot this week it's been whoo it's been a hot one um and what's hot for you what's what's hot for you yesterday i think it got to 105 oh wow well, so it is hot mm -hmm. yeah we're oh yeah it's like 108 right now so it's like crazy but 
Yeah, 105. Yeah, I, I don't lie about heat because I've lived in California and Florida, so uh, uh, I, I, uh, I know all the weather. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I've actually missed work because of fires, snowstorms, and hurricanes. So I know I know weather. <laughs> uh, see, to say the least, yeah, you definitely know you definitely know your weather. Although that dry heat in Arizona was pretty uh, bad. That was. It just oh, boom. Just hit. That was you. hot. <laughs> a fireball. It was like a marble or a, or like some kind of whatever Avengers fireball or something. Oh that, yeah, that's it was poor fireball. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely, it definitely would hit you. I mean, everywhere, everywhere you were, you know. But, uh, but you know the irony. Oh, the irony! It was hot in Arizona, but it was cool hanging out with everybody. That's all. In the yes. Hood, right? So yeah. cool. And uh, so to end this interview, although I feel like you and I could just talk for hours. I mean, for real, we need to have like the image <laughs> to bring you back so we can like do this for. Another couple of minutes, hours or something. Yeah. No, we need to get you to Denver. We'll we gotta get you to Denver. <laughs> no, bring me to Denver. It's gonna be a whole it's gonna be a whole deal. I'm telling you, I think we do <laughs> we do schools and story time at the store and then in the evening we have a poetry night. I think would just be super cool. <laughs> yeah, that, you know, that sounds awesome. And how far is how far is the Red Rocks from you? Like the amphitheater? Is that is that um from the bookstore, it's about forty minutes, I think. Uh -huh. Come but on. it's it's worth it. Red Rocks. Yeah. yeah. Oh God. Uh, now we're changing subjects from books to concerts. But anybody go see a concert at Red Rocks. It doesn't even matter if the band sucks. The con the the venue is just <laughs> yeah. out of this world. And actually, then to brag again, my high school graduation was at Red Rocks, so I got to yes. get my diploma walking across that stage. <laughs> uh, uh, how cool is that? Because I heard yeah. the acoustics are like next level there. There. Like, they're amazing and during the summer they'll do movies there and it's just yes so red rocks is in your future coming to second star to write bookstores in your future maybe oh, well, a pair well. of shoes inspired by kicks is in your future <laughs> oh, well, i'm getting so excited like i'm thinking like i have to find we have to find out who's going to be performing there and we're going to make it a whole thing like I'm yes. gonna check the concert while i'm there and then we're going to do the concert at the bookstore and then it, 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 it's going to be a situation it's going to be the best. And I promise we will let everyone know when it happens so they can all attend the Kicks event of. Oh, the Kicks event? <laughs> all right. Well, to wrap up with one last question, yeah. and maybe the toughest question, toughest question to answer. Yeah, I'm ready. Do you have a favorite pair of Kicks? You know what? I'm glad you asked that question. So when you stepped away, just for oh, a okay. moment. I, I was telling I was telling the uh, the viewers that yesterday I had the opportunity to touch the original Jordans, like the OG Jordans, the uh -huh. 1984 Jordans that start off anywhere. You ready? Between thirty four thousand dollars to sixty five thousand dollars. Holy! Yeah, this is what they look like. I don't know if you can. Oh yeah. Oh whoa! So you got to touch them? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was in the store. I got a chance to. I, I, I literally got a chance to touch them in the case. Like they were like, yeah, uh, yeah. By the way, you're not gonna put your, your hand on it, but if you got to touch them in the case. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, first of all, uh, that's like a really nice car, and uh, yeah, and I can use that money something. But I was like, at least I can say that I was able to touch thirty four thousand dollars shoes Ooh. yesterday, just on vacation. Why not? Just because there's something else to do. Oh uh, so, my god. Yeah, so to get to your <laughs> your question, those are my favorites. Uh, no, not so much. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite Jordans are the uh, Cactus Jack, uh, the, the Cactus Jacks, Orler Blue, uh, uh, Orler Blue, Travis Scott Cactus Jacks. I know it's a mouthful, but like the the color is like crazy. So okay. I really, really I really like those uh, shoes. Super super rare. Uh, super expensive. So I mean, those those are the ones that just go in a case somewhere. I was telling the viewers that, and I also tell you the shoes I wear, uh, or the shoes that I collect. A lot of times are very artistic in nature because yeah. I'm on the road and I'm going to do a little shoe shopping a little later on. I, I didn't bring a bag filled with shoes. What I did was I brought an empty bag to <laughs> fill with shoes. You know what I'm saying? All right, yeah. but I'll show you. I'll show you what I'm rocking right now. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll go with. <clears throat> These, these are my everyday just slides. I mean, with a name like Van. You, you gotta have Vans. Gotta rock Van. <laughs> so I'm rocking these cause you know, I mean, it's like something to slide on. It would but, almost be sad if you didn't like Vans with your name. <laughs> no, no, right. Yo, that, remind me, when I get to Denver, I'm gonna tell you a whole Van story about how 
yeah, it's a whole situation. <laughs> but, but these are the waffle trainers that I'm wearing as I'm moving about. And okay. so the beginning of the summer, I was like, you know what? I got a pair of these. Uh, they're brown and with the with the yellow swoosh. They're super comfortable shoes. And I, so if I like something, I just like get multiple shoes, especially well, shoes. I get multiple shoes, just different colorways. Yeah. So I have the same shoe, like in a lot of different colors and stuff. So, so yeah, that's, and that's really like that. And then have some, some water shoes. I mean, you know, that you don't care about that. Just whatever. But those, <laughs> like, those are the kicks that I'm kicking it in at the moment. Yeah. 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 I love it. Well, thank you so much for this. Come on, I, I'm going to say conversation. It was definitely more of a conversation than the interview, which I absolutely love. And so thank you so much. And uh, you can get a copy of Kicks at or, Second Star to the Right Books. Or two. Or 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 three. Or three. Okay. Yeah. Why why just buy one? Yeah, why not? Go why for not? it. You can do one with the cover on, without the cover on. Right. Oh, yo, you know that term that I found out? The undies? undies. Yep. <laughs> I think that's so cool. Like, yeah. yeah. Undies is so wait, wait. Oh, the tie back. Because we have to do the tie back one more time. We gotta do oh, the yeah, tie yeah. wrap up. And then because I think this is just so cool. So you have the end of the yeah. book there, and then you have the tie back. Okay? I love it. It's yeah, it comes full circle. It's it's really awesome. That's really I awesome. love it. Well, thank you so much for this conversation and get kicks. You get a <laughs> kick out of it. I promise. <laughs> yeah.